Hi, I'm Gregory Patrick, and I am an embroiderer. Actually, I'm pretty new to this. I've only been doing it for about six months. But I thought I'd show you some of the mistakes and things that I did at the very beginning, and possibly that will help out some people who are starting this <clears throat> for the first time, because I promise you, it can be so enjoyable and so much fun, if not just relaxing and uh, contemplative at the same time. Uh, so the first thing I have to say is, buy an iron. If you're anything like me, you hate ironing. Obviously, I don't iron very much. But it's important to iron your canvases or the materials that you're working on long before you even start punching the thread through the canvas. Because once you're done and you take your hoop off, whatever you didn't iron is still there and it's impossible to get out. So all that hard work will be left with all these kind of bridges and creases and wrinkles and crap. So you don't want crap. That's the first rule. Secondly, don't be a fool like me and run out and buy a crap load of materials that you don't need. I followed all the master's advice and bought the hoops. We'll talk about hoops in a second because I have a thing about hoops. Um, I bought all the canvases, which are pretty pricey, really pricey when you think about what they are. And especially if you don't know what kind of material you're really going to be playing with, because not all materials like to be punched. I will tell you this right now, I have had a hard time messing with silk fibers, okay? Fabrics made of silk, not fun, not fun. It doesn't like to be touched, let alone punched. Um, find something around your house that is probably damaged, like uh, clothing or something. Something you still have, maybe it's got a stain on it. Here's a good example. This is a jacket I'm working on for a client. And it's a denim jacket. And on the cuff was this big, huge rip right there. You can't really see it very much anymore because we embroidered over it and we fixed it. So find something like that. Maybe something that has a, a blemish or a, a bleach spot. See if you can cover it. Play with things like that. Uh, also, I went out and I bought <laughs> the special printer paper so I could print out patterns and iron transfer them. What they don't tell you on the package is that they are only for inkjet printers. And I am, I guess, to 21st century, and I have a laser printer, and it doesn't work. It actually says on the package, on the inside, if you put this paper into your uh, laser printer, it will kill it for good. No ifs, ands, or buts. Talk to it. And then I bought the special red pencil with the special paper. Didn't work. Didn't work. I probably spent a small fortune on just making the biggest mistakes I've ever made. And of course, you don't get that money back, you just learn, and that's the most valuable lesson. So this is the funny thing. My husband says to me, you're an artist. Why don't you just draw a flower or whatever it is you're going to embroider on the fabric? And I foolishly looked at him and I was like, you can do that? Yes, you can. Sketch your own little whatevers you want to do on whatever it is you're doing and freestyle and have fun. Playing with different needles. I have discovered I like one particular kind of needle. I don't even think it's called a milliner's needle. I think it's just a regular sewing needle. I like it because of the length and the eyelet hole. I have a really hard time, even with the threader thingy that, that exists out there, I can't get that to work. So I like my needles uh, maybe about an inch and a half with a really nice size eyelet that's not that much bigger than the needle itself. Some of those embroidery needles, those eyelets are so small. I don't know how you get all six strands inside there. So play around with different needles. You can buy packages that have multi sets in them and figure out which one it is you'd like and then just start playing with those. Promise you it'll save a lot of headaches in the future. Oh, and that reminds me, pin cushions. I didn't want to have a pin cushion because uh, it wasn't working for me. I kept wanting to look for my pin cushion and I tend to work really fast. So I got myself a little magnet. See, mine's Frida Cola, uh, Cola, excuse me. And then there's Frida as well. So I've got my two Fridas. <laughs> if you like Frida, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so this way I can just throw it down and pick up my next thing and come back real quick and know where my, my needle is without having to spend a whole lot of time looking for my pin cushion. Anyway, that works for me. Uh, don't put this too close to your phone, though. Uh, the next thing you want to do is playing with hoops. I have never... Uh, okay, I will tell you this. I won't buy hoops off of Amazon or any site online ever again. you got to pay attention to the warping. If I can't look at it and hold it in my hand and see that it's not 
warped. Uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. I bought a couple of hoops off of Amazon, two different companies. Invariably, one of them in there, the one that I'm really wanting to work with, doesn't fit the outer part at all. I've also discovered too that the hoops I really don't like are the ones with the, the twist and then a screw on the other side. So you got to hold the screw, twist, it never really tightens and if it does, it's warped. Uh, so hold your hoops before you buy them so that you can see they're nice and even and they fit inside each other. Um, I haven't played with plastic yet, but I have, I'm a really big fan of bamboo. And I'm sure that's where people will say, well, that's why they're probably dwarfed, just because they're bamboo. Um, <laughs> the back side of your work, people seem to be really critical about. I was very particular about it uh, at the very beginning because I was told it was a sign of a, of a master. Well, i got to say, I don't think I ever want to be a master. I think I really enjoy being a student so much more. So, um, don't focus too much on the back side. I was spending more time thinking about the back of the work than it was the front of the work. Granted, they were looking really good on both sides and they could have been at some point, what do you say, reversible and are like chaos, control, chaos, control, you like, you like. Um, don't, don't worry too much about it. If no one's gonna see it, who cares? Just go and, and play and if you think the back side is a warpy, nasty mess, don't worry about it. It's all an illusion anyway. Uh, tension is critically important. I have discovered when working on denim jackets and things like that, that if I don't have the right tension in my hoop on my work, and it's not, I'm telling you, when you hit it, it better sound like a drum. You're gonna pop, pop, you know, thud, thud. When you hit it, it should sound like a drum. If it doesn't, you're gonna start to see as you're going along in your work, your thread isn't completely holding onto the fabric. And when you take the hoop off, your stuff is almost gonna be free flowing off the top of the material. So please pay attention to your attention. <laughs> I have discovered, I don't really, um, I do hoop art sometimes. It's really nice. I, I really like playing with like linens and stuff like that, different canvases that, that I come across. I found an old set of curtains that were about to be thrown away, made the great set of blue canvases I've ever worked with. Um, I have discovered I really like doing things like uh, cushions, yeah, pillow cushions. You know, I, I was playing around with denim jackets and clothing and things like that, and I still will, but there's such a limited array of people that will want it because of sizing and that kind of thing. But who doesn't like a really gorgeous throw cushion on a swank pillow? Am I right? Am I right? So I really like playing, this is the one I did, I finished this one yesterday, it took me about two days. Um, but you can buy these really inexpensively. Um, you can put the hoop on, get your stuff done, and then buy the pillow insert. And actually, just get one insert and keep interchanging out your uh, cushions often. Great, great technique. I love doing cushions. And uh, actually, this is, a, this is one uh, that wasn't quite custom, but I like doing custom work. I've had quite a few pieces that I've worked on where I've got maybe two or three days into it and someone says whatever you're working on i want that now and then we start talking and collaborating as client and artist and sometimes as an artist you can get fumbled with your own inspiration and your own desires about what it is you want to create but when you're working with a client sometimes you really get to enjoy this collaborative effort where the client is being as creative as possible too, asking to throw in certain colors and flowers, and you never say no, it's their cushion, you're always good, but while you're doing it, you start to see, oh, what a great idea they had. So um, that's what I've really started getting into, is the cushions. So I tell you what, if you would like to be a client of mine, my information is down in the link below, uh, so is my blog, you should really check that out. Uh, I show a lot of my work in progress throughout my blog and my Instagram and all that stuff. So go check it out. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I know everybody says that, but if you give it a thumbs up, at least I know you saw it and you liked it and I'll make another one. So that's it. Y'all go embroider.